Dear students, we are in the sixth lecture of the memory module. And over the past few lectures, we have looked at the concept of memory hierarchy and various design choices we have at the cache. In today's lecture, we are going to look at the effect of memory hierarchy quantitatively. Specifically, we are going to measure the cache performance. As you are aware, in a five stage pipeline, during the fetch stage, we access the memory with the address of instruction and the memory responses with certain number of bits which in, we interpret as instruction and during the memory access stage we access the, uh, the same memory block and it responds with some bit pattern which we interpret as data during the memory access stage we access the memory primarily for load and stores so till module 2 we have assumed that memory uh, is a single huge chunk but over the past few lectures we realized that there are there is a hierarchy with multiple levels of memories and let's assume that uh, we have an instruction cache with a cache which services the request from the fetch stage and we have a data cache which services the request from the memory access stage. Following that, we can have multiple levels of cache and eventually the main memory. If we assume that all the accesses to the instruction cache and data cache are hits, it means that the data is available in them. Also, let's assume that uh, they take one cycle to respond with the data. In that case, the basic CPU performance equation would be something like this CPU time equals to the CPU clock cycles times clock cycle time this is what we have seen right from module 0 but we all know that instruction and data cache are not perfect because of their limited size some of the accesses to them will be misses in that case the CPU performance equation can be extended as shown in equation 1. We have a new term which is memory stall cycles. These are the total number of cycles contributed by the memory which is not perfect. Now let's try, uh, dwell a little more into the memory stall cycles. It is given by the total number of misses incurred times miss penalty. Miss penalty is a new term for us. Basically, it is the number of stalls due to a miss, the number of stalls at the pipeline because we missed in some level of the memory. That would be the miss penalty. We can rewrite the memory stalls. Uh, stall cycles considering the total number of instructions so it would be the total instruction count times misses per total instructions times the miss penalty so this term is more popularly called as misses per instruction at the memory we typically are aware of the total number of accesses that have happened and total number of hits and misses among them. Now with that information if we try to understand misses per instruction it would be the miss rate times the total number of accesses upon the total instruction count. So how did we get this? Just by using the miss rate equation which is total number of misses upon total number of memory accesses. Now if we look at the memory stall cycles it would come to the total number of instructions times total number of memory accesses upon total number of instructions times miss rate 
times miss penalty so just like we have the basic cpu performance equation this would be the basic memory performance equation that we would we would come back to time and again misses per instruction is in general also given as mpki misses per kilo instructions so in uh, various design choices you would come across the term like there are uh, there were 30 misses per every 1000 instructions it means that mpki is 30 now in ca in case we have the misses per instruction data for reads and writes separately also we have the miss rate and miss penalty for reads and writes separately then the memory stall cycles would would get expanded like this we have the total instruction count times to total number of reads per instruction times the miss rate for reads and miss penalty for reads in the same way for writes now this is the basic performance equations with performance equation with a more realistic memory we can rearrange it as in equation 5 all we did was to multiply and divide with the total instruction count and what we have here is the cpi of execution it means the cycle per instruction in the pipeline because of the pipeline plus the total number of memory stalls upon total number of instructions So in module 2, we concentrated on the CPI of the pipeline and tried to bring it, bring it as close to 1 as possible. We were looking at possible issues that will stop us to achieve this, basically hazards and some optimizations on how to reduce them. Now if we replace the memory stall cycle that we saw earlier in equation 4, what we would have here is the basic performance equation with more details of the memory which are the miss rate, number of memory accesses per instruction and miss penalty. Now if we want to improve the performance of memory we should look at these three terms and try to optimize them. So there are a very good practice examples in the textbook pages C5, C6 and C17. I want all of you to go through them. All the three examples present the data for each of these terms in a slightly different way and it would give you a good practice on how to go about and cali to calculate the CPU time. Now if we specifically look at the memory performance, there is another metric which is called average memory access time AMAT. It is basically the hit time plus miss rate times miss penalty. Now if we look at it closely, AMAT gives us the number of cycles or the number of seconds we spend for each access to that level of memory. If we assume it as one, then we have the ideal case, wherein there is there are no misses, so the miss rate would be zero and hit time would be one cycle. So AMAT is a, a more holistic performance metric rather than looking at hit time or miss rate independently. Now if we have the 
hit time, miss rate, miss penalty for instruction and data access separately, then AMAT would be expanding to something like this. So, for the percentage of instructions which are for the percentage of accesses which are instructions, we multiply that with the AMAT of instructions. And for the percentage of accesses which are data, we multiply with the AMAT of the data. Percentage of instructions and percentage of data together will give us the total number of memory accesses. This is right after the pipeline. Now, the hit time, instruction miss rate, and miss penalty can be interpreted as if they, be, uh, they are pertaining to instruction cache. In the same way, hit time, data miss rate, and miss penalty can be interpreted as if they belong to the data cache. Now, the AMAT equation that we saw is for each level of memory. But what if we want to consider multiple levels of memory at a time? We can extend AMAT and it's more or less straightforward. Let's quickly go through that. If we are considering only one level, AMAT would be hit time plus miss rate times miss penalty. But let's say we have two levels, one is L1 and another is the main memory. Then AMAT would be hit time of L1 plus miss rate of L1 times miss penalty of L1. Typically, for all our calculations, we assume that all the memory accesses that go to the main memory are hits. With this assumption, the miss penalty of L1 is actually the memory access time of the main memory. Now, if we have two levels of cache followed by main memory, the AMAT equation would be hit time of L1 plus miss rate of L1 times hit time of L2 plus miss rate of L2 times miss penalty of L2. Now, if you observe closely, we have actually expanded the miss penalty of L1 considering L2 and main memory. So, the equation 3 in the slide, this part of equation 3 is actually the AMAT of L2. Now, if you consider three levels of cache followed by main memory, then the overall equation would look something like this. Again, the miss penalty of L2 gets expanded with its AMAT considering L3. So, if you look at the, uh, the fourth equation here, it is basically the overall memory access time with four levels of memory is the hit time of the first level and few of them miss in the first level. So, for them, we consider the hit time for the second level. Further, they might be misses in the second level. So, for them, we consider the hit time of third level and the hit time of the main memory for those which are missed in the third level also. Like I said, it gives a holistic view of the entire memory hierarchy. Now, considering AMAT only for caches, we have certain optimizations. Basically, they all try to answer this question on how to go about reducing AMAT of the cache. So, AMAT has only three terms, hit time, miss rate and miss penalty. We need to able to optimize them so that AMAT gets as close to one as possible. Just like we try to get CPA as close to one as possible in module 2. The first question would be how to reduce the miss rate of the cache. 
and possible optimizations that have been explored are increasing the block size. This will help us to exploit the spatial locality better. Second one is increasing the cache size itself. It can help us with both temporal and spatial locality. Third one is increasing the associativity. Fourth one is prefetching. Prefetching is a totally new concept. We are going to uh, spend some more time on each of these. Another approach of reducing AMAT is to look at miss penalty and try to reduce it. For that, we have multi level caches. And second approach is prioritize reads over writes. Basically, if we have two or more accesses to any level of cache, and some of them are read requests and some of them are write requests. And because we already know that writes do not typically stall the pipeline because they are always the consumers and rarely the producers and reads can have potential stalls. It's better to prioritize reads over writes when we service at the cache. So that is a optimization very widely used and it's almost everywhere prevalent now. The third approach is to look at the hit time and try to reduce it. For that, we can do a fast lookup of the cache to identify whether it's a hit or miss. And the second approach is to do the address translation better. I'll come back to this point after we complete the main memory module or some part of it because that will give a more uh, holistic picture for you to appreciate this optimization better. In the next class, which uh, we are going to spend uh, some more time on each of these optimizations and see how they help us in reducing the average memory access time of the cache. I'll pause for now. Thank you.